Hey guys, welcome back. The next book we're going to read is about an artist named Francisco Goya. And I gotta warn you, this one's a little creepy, so if you don't like creepy things, you might not want to watch this one, okay? All right, let's get started. Francisco Goya was born in Fuente de Todos, Spain in 1746. He was one of Spain's greatest artists and discovered new ways of painting that led to the exciting world of modern art. And this is a self-portrait of him. Okay. During his life, Goya painted portraits of the wealthy people in Spain's royal court. Dukes, duchesses, kings, and queens paid Goya to make paintings of them. Sometimes Goya made paintings just for himself. He painted things that interested him and things that came from his mysterious and secret thoughts. All right, so this is the family of the Duke of Osuna, and this one is called the Colossus. Okay. While Francisco Goya was growing up, Spain was a very poor country. The Spanish king was spending most of Spain's money on wars, and the rest went to the king's greedy, rich friends. Almost everyone else was very poor. Cities didn't have garbage pickup or streetlights or police departments. Roads were rocky and bumpy, and bandits were all over the place. Okay, so we have a cartoon here. Little baby Francisco saying, Dad, can I have a new stick to draw in this dust with? This one broke. And his dad saying, Francisco, you know I can't afford a new stick every time I turn around. When Goya was about 12 years old, his mother and father decided to leave the dusty town of Fuente Todos and move to the busy city of Zaragoza. It was an important move for Francisco Goya. The city of Zaragoza had churches that were filled with beautiful paintings and sculptures. Goya probably saw his first works of great art there. When Goya grew up, he painted the walls and ceilings of some of those churches, like the one above. When Goya started school in his new city, he must have shown a great interest in art. His teachers thought he should go to learn about art from Saragossa's master artist, José Luzán. José Luzán taught Goya to draw by having him copy the artwork and prints of other artists. Goya also made drawings of statues that were in Saragossa. He, needed to, he learned other things that an artist needs to know, like how to mix colors and how to get canvas and walls ready to paint on. After spending four years with José Luzán, Goya traveled to Italy to study the great masterpieces there. All right, and in this cartoon, one of the monks is saying, Señor Goya, have you ever considered going to art school? And this one says, it should be fun. Besides, we'll, we'll be out of paper by the end of the week. There are stories about Goya's adventures on his trip to Italy. Some of them tell of Goya fighting bulls in different towns along the way in order to make money. No one knows if these stories are true, but his paintings show that he knew a lot about bullfighting. Bullfights were very important to Goya throughout his life. He painted many pictures of them and made a series of famous prints, too. <coughs> All right, so here we have a cartoon. Gee, I wonder if I should be a bullfighter or an artist. Pain, oof, blam, hurt, ouch. An artist, definitely an artist. And then here's one of his bullfight paintings. During the time Goya was learning about art, a new king started to rule Spain. King Charles III wanted to make things better for his country. He began by fixing up the capital city, Madrid. Soon, it was safer to go out at night. Streets were well-lighted, garbage was picked up, and new buildings and palaces were built. There were lots of empty walls in the new buildings that needed paintings and decorations. Artists from all over the world came to Madrid to help. Goya got a job there designing tapestries. A tapestry is a beautifully woven cloth that can be hung up like a painting. They were made during Goya's time in factories. 
Workers there copied designs given to them by different artists. The painting above is one of Goya's designs. It's called Boy Inflating a Balloon. <clears throat> Soon, people in the royal court noticed Goya's beautiful tapestry designs and asked him to paint their pictures. He was even asked to paint a portrait of King Charles III. One of Goya's special gifts was his ability to, not, to show not only how people looked, but also what kind of people they were in real life. Goya liked King Charles III and painted him looking wise and friendly, but he painted the next king of Spain and his queen above the way he knew them to be. Even in their fancy costumes with jewelry and medals, Goya showed them as dull and oafish people. All right, so here's Charles III, the one that he liked. And here's the new king and queen, family of Charles IV, looking dull and boring. Francisco Goya loved children. The painting on the next page is one of his most famous portraits. It's fun to look at all the things Goya put in this painting. The hungry cats in the shadows give you a feeling that the boy's pet bird could be in trouble at any moment. Goya found an interesting way to sign his name, too. He put it on the card that the bird is holding in its beak. The boy's bright red suit makes him stand out from the background. But the really special thing Goya did in this portrait was to paint the boy's face so that he almost looks alive. Okay, so notice the hungry cats, the bird holding the card, and the boy's face. And this one is actually called Don Manuel Osorio Manrique de Zuniga. <clears throat> Francisco Goya was becoming one of Spain's favorite artists. He made lots of money and had friends in the royal court. Just when things seemed like they couldn't be better, something happened that changed Goya's life and the way he painted forever. And this one is called Detail of the Madhouse at Zaragoza. Goya became ill with a mysterious disease and almost died. His, he finally got better, but the illness left him totally deaf. Strange and frightening things began to show up in Goya's work. He may have painted the things he felt during his illness. People were probably surprised at the new way that Goya painted. So the cartoon here says, Are you sure this is the same guy who did your sister's family portrait? <laughs> you can see bats and things in there. And this one is called Witch's Sabbath. <clears throat> Goya didn't put strange and frightening things in all of his work. People still asked him to do portraits and other paintings. Goya's looser, exciting brush strokes gave more movement and expression to his paintings. The miracle of St. Anthony on the next page was done for the ceiling of a church. When you see it close up, it almost looks unfinished, but Goya knew that from a distance, his new style would make his, this painting look more lifelike. So this is a detail of the miracle of St. Anthony. In 1808, Goya's life changed again. Napoleon Bonaparte, a famous French general, wanted to take over Spain. Napoleon sent his soldiers there, and a bloody war began. Goya saw terrible things happening. He decided to show what he saw in his artwork. The 3rd of May shows Napoleon's soldiers shooting defenseless Spanish people. The fear you can see in their faces and the strong shapes and lighting make this one of Goya's greatest works. So this is called 3rd of May. And there's the painting and then a detail. When Goya was older, he moved into a large house and decided to paint the walls there. These paintings were Goya's most mysterious and powerful works. He never told anyone what they meant. The frightening witches, strange creatures, and people fighting could have had something to do with the way Goya felt about his sickness, his deafness, the war he hated, and his old age. 
So in the cartoon, it says, I'm done decorating the bedroom. What do you think? And she says, gee, I thought you were going to wallpaper. And then here's some of his paintings here that were in his house. So this is detail of Saturn devouring one of his children. This one is called Two Old People Eating. And this one is called The Fight with Cudgels. Francisco Goya lived to be 82 years old. He was able to show the real deep down feelings of the people he painted in his lifelike portraits. Goya is also famous for the wonderful drawings and prints that he made. Many of them are hard to figure out as are as hard to figure out as his mysterious paintings. Goya painted many different subjects during his life. His beautiful portraits of Spanish life are as interesting as the strange, powerful works he made after his illness. Modern artists who came after Goya learned much from his exciting and expressive style of painting. Okay, this is detail of child from the family of the Duke of Osuna, which we saw. This is Tu que no puedes. They can't help it. And this one is called detail of the meadow at San Isidro. And this one is called detail of witches' Sabbath. If you get a chance to see a real Goya painting, especially the ones he did when he was older, look closely. You can see that Goya did not always paint with brushes. He often used small sticks or reeds to slash on the paint to get the exciting feeling his paintings are known for. The end. All right, I hope you enjoyed this book about Francisco Goya. And I hope that you are staying well and staying away from people who don't live in your house and washing your hands with soap and water and singing the alphabet song while you do it. And I hope that we get to see each other soon. Miss you guys. Love you lots. Hope to see you soon. Bye.